Today, we're going to be viewing a 1943 wartime Parker Pen booklet that explains to its dealers the reason for the Parker 51 shortages and what efforts Parker Pen is making for the war. Let's take a look inside, shall we? Why can't I get as many Parker Pens to sell as I do of other brands? Meeting the Responsibilities of War, U.S. Regulations on Pen Production Since December 7, 1941, two prime objectives have stood firm in the mind of every loyal American. They are the safety and freedom of our country. Until the day of final victory, there must be no swerving from these objectives. Any plant or organization with the requisite facilities and the skills owes it to the nation to aid the fight of, to the fullest extent. Even seven months before Pearl Harbor, Parker recognized this fact and volunteered the use of its resources to the government. Parker in Canada was one of the first concerns in North America to ship war goods to the fighting forces of the United Nations. Since then, Parker has been called upon to devote its facilities more and more to war work. Today, Parker men and women are making intricate shell fuses, parts for gun sight mounts, and airplane motors, radio and submarine devices, and hundreds of other items which we hire manufacturing position of the highest degree. Underlining the importance of Parker's production for war, we list here the scope of what are war assignments. Eight prime contracts with the Army, one prime contract with the Navy, 352 subcontracts with the Army and Navy, three prime contracts with Canadian Army, six prime contracts with British Admiralty, and two subcontracts with British Admiralty. We want you to know that you are largely responsible for what success has been scored in this important work. For you, as a loyal Parker retailer, have helped create volume sales of Parker products down the years. This, in turn, has enabled us to develop the precision skills and the modern facilities which are today standing the nation in such good stead in the production of equipment for war and victory. As indicated by the foregoing, Parker voluntarily curtailed its production of fine pens over two years ago. During 1942, the increasing demands of the government for critical materials such as copper, steel, brass, and plastics all but ended the production of fountain pens by every American pen maker. In view of the peacetime output of fountain pens, approximately 50 million pens a year for 10 years, the War Production Board gravely questioned whether any new pens were needed. However, WPB finally decided that now fountain pens were a vital necessity, that at least a limited production should be permitted. So, in December 1942, WPB restricted the production of new fountain pens by all precision pen makers to 50% of their 1941 output. In addition, it was tactfully understood that out of this 50%, each pen maker was to allot his fair share to fill the pen needs of the Army and Navy and other government agencies. Parker and Schaefer strictly adhered to the letter and intention of this order. A full share of Parker pens was made available to the Army, Navy, and the Board of Economic Warfare. All remaining pens were rationed on a fair and equitable basis to retailers. Thus, Parker has fulfilled its duty to the armed forces and is still doing it. However, the Army and Navy found that it was not getting sufficient total quantities of fountain pens from all American manufacturers. Therefore, on October 1st, 1943, the War Production Board ordered the Precision Pen Group to supply only 30% of its fountain pen output on the 1941 basis to civilians. Also, 
This 30% for civilians is now so regulated under WPB that only 7.5% can be produced and shipped in any three month period. Because Parker has been supplying its full share of new pens to the Army and Navy since December 1942, the new WPB amendment will not further reduce the number of Parker pens available for retailers in 1944 over the number available this past year, unless, of course, new WPB rulings are made in the future. Important to you is the fact that the Parker 51 pen selling for $12.50 and $15 was not introduced generally until 1942, time to furnish the utmost in writing comfort and quality during the critical period of wartime scarcity and increased writing needs. Therefore, while you may have fewer Parker pens to sell in 1944, the dollar volume and profit on them should compare favorably with your dollar volume on Parker pens during 1941. This is a striking example of how Parker's progressive pioneering in creating finer pens and pencils to sell at higher unit prices in time of peace is serving now to protect your Parker profits during this period of war. When peace comes, you can look to Parker for continued leadership in the making and merchandising of superb writing instruments. For excellence in war production, only pen maker to win Army Navy E. On October 29, 1943, a high honor was accorded the men and women of Parker. At a very impressive ceremony in Jamesville, the Army Navy E Award for Excellence was presented to us in recognition of great work in the production of war equipment. In the course of his address on this occasion, our president, Kenneth Parker, stated, When we first went into munitions work, we decided that so long as any substantial part of our pen business remained, manufacture of essential war materials would be done at a no-profit basis. I do not mention this in a way of boasting, but as a statement of policy under which profits from war production have been turned back into the products in the form of higher quality or reduced costs to the government. On that basis, the company has executed nine prime contracts and 352 subcontracts at a, sing at a profit after taxes of less than one half of 1%. The fact that Parker is the only fountain pen company to receive the Army Navy E is a source of pride to all of us, but an even greater satisfaction comes from the knowledge that the war material we produce is helping our fighting men on all the major battlefronts, helping them hasten the day of final victory. Questions and Answers 1. So Parker is doing war work, what does that mean to me? Unless the war is won, your business, your very life, will be in jeopardy. The first duty of all of us today is to contribute everything we can to the war effort. 2. Why does some other retailer in my town have Parker pens and I have none? Every retailer is getting his fair allotment of Parker pens, no more, no less. Only one-fourth of this allotment can be sent to a retailer in any one quarter. If you are out of pens and your neighbor has some, it probably means he happened to receive his shipment later in the quarter than you did. 3. When can I expect to get larger shipments of Parker 51 pens? Probably not until after the war. The barrel of the Parker 51 pen requires a special plastic which is vital to the war effort. Furthermore, these barrels are bored with solid rods of plastic. Many of the screw machines needed for this work are being used on war assignments. If military needs decline and production restrictions are lifted, you will get your full share of all additional pens we can make. Four. I am an old established Parker retailer. Why can't I get more pens 
than newer retailers in this area. Just as Parker's production is reduced by WPB regulations, so the retailer's percentage is figured in relation to his total volume of purchases in other years. Therefore, only those who bought during the base period are established retailers. Each deserves and is getting all the Parker merchandise to which he is entitled. This, we feel, is the American spirit that will see us through, ready to build the new America for which our armed forces are fighting today. 5. I have a big investment in the name Parker. How is this being protected for me? The 1944 Parker advertising program is designed to move pens. It is pointing, pointed even more strongly toward building lasting prestige for the name Parker. This, we believe, is our right and our duty, and is so recognized by the government. For Parker has already become firmly established in the minds of your customers as the world's leading maker of fine pens and pencils. The retail value of Parker pens and pencils already sold its seeds a quarter of a billion dollars. Thus, the very name Parker is a valuable property. It is an asset that we intend to safeguard for you until the day when Parker pens will again be available for all who desire them. We pledge to devote our skills and resources to the fullest in the creation of precision equipment for the fighting forces of the United Nations. We pledge to provide, in so far as we are permitted by government rules, the very finest in precision writing instruments to serve the people of America here on the home front. We pledge to do everything possible to protect the interest of our loyal dealer friends by maintaining the prestige and the profit magic in the name Parker. The Parker Pen Company, Janesville, Wisconsin. Well, that completes our trip down memory lane. I hope you enjoyed listening to the history of Parker and their wartime efforts. Let me know if you enjoyed the video or if you have anything to share on the subject. I loved sharing this Parker ephemera with you, even though it reminds me of my 51E I let go many years ago. But that's another story for another day. Until next time, don't forget to hit that bell for our latest videos and the Vector Collector will see you soon. Ciao, Maine.